Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Steve. I'm a principal engineer in big tech, Linux contributor and open source enthusiast, and this is Linux, by the way. This week, we're gonna go ahead and put two of the biggest Linux releases head to head. We have Fedora 40 Workstation and Ubuntu 2404, which is the Noble Numbat. These are both running on real laptops with Ubuntu running on my Framework 13 AMD edition and with Fedora running on the System76 Lemur Pro. In the day and age of everything being soldered and not having replaceable RAM and SSDs and all that, System76 and Framework are great open source citizens. They both provide drivers, they provide support and guides, and they have parts lists so that you can repair and replace as needed or upgrade your systems. I made an earlier video on Ubuntu getting stuck. So if you were also stuck at that point, what I've done here is I've already went ahead and connected it to Wi-Fi so we can get past that part in the installer. I did some research and the team has the bug identified and they'll be cutting a new release and I'll include that link down at the bottom in case you want that. So having gone through this process several times before, both installers are very similar. Uh, Ubuntu may get slight points for being more aesthetic, but it also has a few more bugs, whereas the Fedora installer is a little more tried and true. I know they're trying to update that next release, but this is the one we have for now. Let's go ahead and click next here and we'll go through this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bump the font size up on Ubuntu so that we can read the text a little easier. I'm also going to increase the font size on Fedora, which isn't baked in the installer. So I'm going to go to the accessibility menu and do that manually. All right. And so for the keyboard layout, we're just picking English there. You can see the Ubuntu makes you kind of step through each one, whereas the Fedora lets you just kind of skip it if you want. So we're going to go ahead and click the disk configuration here. Until it install Ubuntu, interactive, that's fine. Default selection of apps. Uh, you can see here that we've already kind of chosen several more steps on the Ubuntu side versus uh, the Fedora side, which is really just saying what disk and then it goes for it. So we'll, we'll tell it to reclaim our space and delete all here and begin installation. So Fedora is already going. And for the Ubuntu install, we're just gonna take the default installation also, which means that there's no encryption. If you're doing this at home, go ahead and hit advanced and go to LVM and full disk encryption. So that way if you have to sell the computer later or something, you don't have to worry about your data being stolen. Very funny quick note here. I've gone through this install like five times to try and make this video. And each time it didn't work when I disabled the internal display. However, if I leave the internal display on, it appears to be moving forward. So if you're having trouble and you're stuck getting Ubuntu on there, Try using just the laptop's display rather than a bigger external monitor. Also on Ubuntu, if you want to know what's going on while you're installing, you can just click this little icon down here, and this will show you the raw log output so you can troubleshoot things or figure out what's happening. All right, there we go. Both installs have finished successfully, so we're going to go ahead and reboot and check it out. So we're rebooted, and we have our welcome screens. Let's go ahead and click through these. Start setup on the Fedora side, and next on the Ubuntu side. Ubuntu also lets you opt in to the Ubuntu Pro, which will let you get extended updates. And also if you need it, FIPS compliance, but most people who aren't working in government probably don't need that. You can also opt in to send your data to the Ubuntu team, and that's so they can get a view of all the hardware that's in use and where to focus their resources and priorities to help. For Fedora, we have location services and automatic problem reporting. We'll just click next there. We'll enable the third-party repositories. And then, uh, as you saw on the Ubuntu side, Ubuntu has you enter the details up front, and then Fedora has it on reboot. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll do Linux, by the way. Linux, by the way. Super secret password. There we go. And we are all set up in Fedora, too. On Fedora, we also get the option to start with a tour, which will just show us the basic features of the operating system such as the super key and workspaces and their enhanced search and uh, the gesture support and the touchpad. You can see right off the bat here that both have distinctly different aesthetic styles. Uh, Fedora has more of a hand-painted background, whereas Ubuntu has a background that's themed in the release name. Fedora ships with multiple backgrounds and they're all very different style from what Ubuntu ships with. So you can see some are like hand-drawn and some are very abstract uh let's go ahead and set this to dark mode and then we'll just 
go through these backgrounds again. And so you can see that some of them uh, change depending on if it's light mode or dark mode. Since both Ubuntu 2404 and Fedora 40 ship with GNOME 46, most of these dialogues are going to be very similar, if not identical, unless Ubuntu took in a patch or made a change on their own. Ubuntu does ship with a wider variety of background images. So some are photos, some are drawings, some are 3D generated, and we also see the same light to dark theme piece. Uh, although this looks really cool as a dark theme, that, that's really nice. And I especially like this picture here. Uh, that is a very nice touch is to have those backgrounds uh, ship by default with like super high quality. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the stores on each. So on Ubuntu, we have App Center. And we can go ahead and search for Steam here as an example of a uh, app that most people want installed. So we have Steam and we'll click install on that and enter our password. There we go. So that's installing. And on the Fedora side, we can go ahead and go to software, which is very similar in design. Uh, and we will search here for Steam also. On this one, like I had in my Fedora 40 view, the logo is broke, but the installer appears to work fine. And you can also see the details here. So when you're looking as to where you're installing it from, uh, you can install it from RPM Fusion non-free or Flatpak. And the Flatpak logo does look good. One of the nice things about Ubuntu is they also include multiple channels for Steam. So you can see here, we have a beta channel. We have a release candidate channel. There's an edge channel and a stable channel. So that way you can run and get the newest features if you want, or if you don't want your system to break, you can just run the stable one and wait for those changes to come to that release. And there we go. So both of them installed. And let's do the big test where we click open and see what happens. So if we swap between Fedora and Ubuntu, we can see that these are fairly identical uh, with just slight style differences. This one doesn't have a minimize button, whereas Ubuntu does have a minimize button right here. Also, I have large text enabled and on some of these, you can't actually like resize this to see production or development. Uh, it just gets truncated there. There we go. We have Steam successfully logged in on both. And as you can see, the experience looks fairly similar. There might be a slight difference in terms of the colors or the fonts there. Uh, this one looks slightly more blue and this one looks slightly darker to me. Uh, that sort of go with the theme of each. Let's go ahead and install one of the all-time classic games, which is Factorio. If you're a computer programmer, it's oddly similar to that. We'll go ahead and click install. And while that's going, we will switch to Ubuntu and then also hope that I don't get banned from Steam for doing this one after another. This is also something you probably don't see every day, but uh, Steam is downloading on Fedora and it's showing on Ubuntu and that's because the two are actually connected over the network. Um, I didn't set anything up, it's just the default to how that works. You can see here while I have Ubuntu installing, if you have Steam on multiple computers, it will actually send the files across. So I'm not downloading this from the internet in this case. Uh, Ubuntu is getting it from Fedora. So let's go ahead and start this up, see how it goes. Now this is as much a test of AMD versus Intel as it is Fedora versus Ubuntu. So if you see speed differences there, it might be hardware related also. And here we go. So we're in and we can start the game and hit play. And yeah, everything looks flawless. Uh, this is really good. We'll skip the cutscene and nice. There we go. Get some stuff from the Crash debris. There we go. Cool. So that looks good. Plays just great. And that's on Fedora. All right. Let's go ahead and start this up on Ubuntu. And it looks like we have an error with home Linux, by the way, dot Factorio. And so it's saying it has a permission denied error. We'll restart Steam and see if that goes away. While troubleshooting the Steam permission denied, I figured it'd be best if I updated my system first. And so I click update all here, and I also can't do that. So by default, uh, the Snap Store has a few bugs here, which stop us from actually updating the Snap Store, which is a bummer. If we try the same through the Fedora software, we can see here that I can click restart and update, and 
it looks like it's updating. So this definitely shows the reliability and the care and effort that the Fedora team is putting in to make sure everything sort of just works. Fedora is booting back up again and installing the updates. I'm assuming there must be like a kernel update or something which required a full restart. I went ahead and rebooted the Ubuntu system to see if that would clear out our snap issues. Let's check that out. So we'll go to update all, type in our super secret password. And a reboot did not fix that. So if we go ahead and Google this, uh, we can see that this is a very common bug. And so we can run a sudo snap refresh snap store on the terminal and that should resolve it. So let's go ahead and exit the store and give that a shot. So I'm gonna close that out and then run sudo snap refresh snap store. All right, so we've updated the snap store and that was one of the most non-user friendly processes I've seen. We're still getting the permissions error. So one thing we can do is go to our home directory and make a dot factorio and then chmod 777 dot factorio since we don't know what's trying to access it or what it's trying to do. So let's go ahead and hit play again. And it still can't do it. On the Fedora side, all the updates worked. It did the reboot and the install, and now we're up to date. Uh, everything works there, no, no weird workarounds or anything. Out of the box, both use Firefox as their default browser, and as you can see, they are also the same version. So it's 125.0.2, 64-bit, in terms of the default aesthetics, uh, Fedora definitely goes for the minimalist look, so there's not the start button or the app icons on here. It's just a blank canvas, and then we access everything hitting the super key. And then you can see that the bar pops up, and our show apps is here, so we can actually browse through and see what's installed in the system. If we take a look at Ubuntu, uh, it's very similar, but we have, by default, the icons on the left, and then we have the Ubuntu icon for show apps down here. If we compare the applications that are there by default, Fedora definitely has more. It has the LibreOffice suite, and it has Maps and Fedora Media Creator. And if I swap over to Ubuntu, you can see here that we have things like firmware updates, additional drivers, which are on both, but there's no additional fluff here. It's very, very basic out of the box until you go to the Snap Store and install. Let's go ahead and pick something that's not Steam for a better comparison. So I'm gonna go ahead and type Insomnia here and that will bring up an entry and we have a latest stable 900. Let's see what other versions we have here. Beta, release candidate. Okay, so we'll click install there and do Linux by the way. And then while that's going, we'll switch to Fedora and we'll also do Insomnia. And we can see here it does have the flat hub version. And if we go down, it should say the same version. So this one's 2023.5.8. And so I think that that's wrapping the other version. All right, there we go. So we have Insomnia 9 installed in Ubuntu. And that was pretty drama free. And we'll continue here and local vault. And so that appears to work and looks good. Let's check out Fedora. Click open here. All right, and so you can see these are very different versions also. Uh, in this case, we have a custom version that doesn't nag you for logging in, etc. So I kind of prefer the Fedora version just because it doesn't have all the, uh, make sure you log in with SSO and email or you know all that, it, it can just let me use it. But I have a feeling it's an older version that was like the open source one before they got acquired. In terms of the quick launcher, these are both very similar also. So you can see here, it's just mostly a matter of the theme. They both have the same functionality. Uh, this one has keyboard because I have a USB keyboard plugged in and the other one doesn't. If I go ahead and click screenshot here, that looks like the GNOME 46 screenshot. And we'll do that. And then if I switch to Ubuntu and I click screenshot up here, That looks like the same screenshot functionality. If we compare the notifications, uh, these also look identical. Comparing Ubuntu 2404 and Fedora 40, you can see that they're very similar. They both use GNOME 46. 
they both have very similar stores and applets and applications available but it is clear that the fedora system is much more robust and reliable so far on the ubuntu side the installer didn't work and i had to work around that and then also the steam installer didn't work which meant that i couldn't actually run factorio whereas on fedora it was no problem at all everything on fedora has worked so far very well in terms of appearance, it is clear that the Ubuntu team has excellent designers. I really like the look and feel of it. I love their backgrounds. I love their themes. The fonts look really good. Ubuntu gets a 10 out of 10 for just style points. On the Fedora side, we do get the ability to mimic the Ubuntu styles. So we can change our background and we can change the themes to make it look better. But out of the box experience wise, Ubuntu wins on looks. What the comparison really comes down to though, is how fast can Ubuntu improve? Ubuntu is coming from a place of relative strength because they have a very large desktop Linux install base, which means they're gonna be getting a lot of bug reports and feedback and iterating. And they also have a company behind there with a fairly decent amount of developers that can get some fixes out quick. On the Fedora side, well, it already works. And so they'll continue on their six month release cycle and improving and iterating also, but their user base is a little smaller and some of the restrictions are a little heavier in terms of free software versus not free software. In terms of what I'd recommend today, I would say definitely go with Fedora 40. If you just want to play your games and browse the web or do whatever, it's going to work out of the box. With Ubuntu, it needs a little more time to bake. Hopefully there'll be a point release in a couple months here and they will have fixed all of these initial release bugs and then it will be on par with Fedora 40 with the much nicer backgrounds and theming. What do you think? Which one would you pick? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.